All right, this lesson is on geometric distributions. Don't worry, it doesn't have anything to do with actual geometry like shapes or angles. Um, it's just a different type of distribution that is, if you look at the curve, um, it's kind of like this. So instead of like a bell curve, it will look either like this or like that. So it just has to do with the shape of the curve, which we're not even going to be graphing, but we are gonna talk about the probability. So let's watch this lady who, again, she has her whole life put together here. And then I will do three problems that just reiterate what she's talking about. Hi, I'm Adrienne Hill, and welcome back to Crash Course Statistics. We have to wait for a lot of things in life. We wait until we're old enough to live on our own or go to college or drive a car, and waiting can suck. And it's even worse when you don't know how long you'll have to wait. Luckily, in certain situations, probabilities can help you guess how long it might take something to happen, like getting a full house in poker, having your first daughter, or winning the lottery. James, how about that microwave? For example, yeah. you're eating from a box of Birdie Bot's Every Flavor Beans during a fun, if risky, hangout with your friends. These jelly beans have some flavors that are awesome, like cherry and peppermint, and some not so awesome, like grass or boogers or vomit. Mm -hmm. The problem, you don't know if you're gonna get a good or gross flavor until you eat it. And you know that your affinity for this game will go away if you're ever unlucky enough to come across one of those vomit-flavored beans. Cinnamon. Okay. Delicious. But how likely is it that you'll be able to eat four of those odd jelly beans before you get that dreaded vomit flavor and decide to get new friends? Turns out there's a formula to figure this out, the geometric probability formula. This formula comes from the geometric probability distribution, which looks similar to the binomial probability distribution that we talked about in the last episode. But they do something a little bit different. Geometric probabilities tell you the probability that your first success will be on your nth try. And success here just means the event we're interested in happens. It's not always a good thing. For example, the probability that your first vomit flavored jelly bean will be your fifth jelly bean. This means that the first four beans were not vomit flavored. Let's pretend the probability of getting a vomit flavored jelly bean is 5%. Then there's a 95% chance that you'll get any other flavor. As you might remember from the multiplication rule, our chance of getting four non vomit beans in a row is 0 0.95 times 0 0.95 times 0 0.95 times times 0.95 or 0.95 to the fourth. The probability of then getting the vomit bean is 0.05. So altogether, the probability of getting four non-vomit beans and then one vomit flavored bean is this, or about 4.07%. In a what? more general form, the geometric okay. probability formula says the probability of the kth try being your first success is the probability of failure to the k minus one power times the probability of success to the first power. Okay, which I'm going to take over from here. All right, so let's just talk about three problems real quick. It says, what is the probability of getting the first six on the fourth roll using a six-sided die? So if you rolled the dice four times, what is the probability that the first time you saw the number six would be on the fourth time? Okay, this six-sided die is just telling you what the sample set the sample set size is. So here's all of your possible outcomes. And so we're going to roll the dice, the die, four times. And you only want the six to show up in the fourth position. So you essentially want the six not to be here and you want the six to be here. So you want not six here and you want six here. So what is the probability that it would be not six? It would be all of the other numbers and there are five of them out of six. The probability the next one will not be six is five out of six. The third one is five out of six. What is the probability the fourth one would be a six? It would be one out of six. 
Okay. So what it's saying is that you're multiplying this all together, but you could rewrite this as five six to the third power times one over six. So now let's look at the fractions. The probability that you would get a six is one out of six. The probability that you would not get a six is five out of six. And you want that to happen three times before you get the one out of six. Technically, this is to the first power. And so three and one would be four rolls. Okay, so if you wanted to, you could put this right in your calculator. You would just do five, six to the third power times one sixth. And the percent is 0 0.09645. So it's about a 9.6% chance that you will not roll a six on a die until your fourth roll. Okay. And you're going to see that all of these just follow a pattern. 15% of all cars passing along a certain road are blue. What is the probability that the seventh car will be the first time that you see a blue car? Okay. So seven cars are going to pass. You want to know what is the probability that you will not see a blue car until the seventh turn, which would then be blue. So the probability that you would even see a blue car is 15%. So I'm going to put this at the very last position. And the probability that it's not blue is just 1 minus 15 or 85% chance that it's not blue. Okay, once you multiply all your 85s out, you'll see that you're really just doing 0.85 to the sixth power because you want the blue to not appear the first six times and you want the blue to appear on the seventh time. So again, just put this in the calculator, 0.85 to the sixth power times 0.15. So it's about... 0 0.05657. So there's about a 5.6% chance that the you will not see a blue car until it's the seventh one on the road. Okay, for this one, I'm not going to do the little um, like selection lines. And we're also not going to take it as far as doing the mean, the variance, and the standard deviation. Okay, we're really just going to do the probability. So 4% of the population in a small town works as a teacher. What is the probability that the 10th person you encounter in this town is a teacher? So what this is saying is you want the 10th person to be a teacher, which means you want the nine people before to not be a teacher. If 4% are teachers, what percent are not teachers? You've guessed it, 96%. Make sure you put it as a decimal. So you want the first nine people to not be teachers, and then you want the last person to be a teacher. 0.96 to the ninth times 0 0.0 quattro, 0 0.0277. So it's about a 2.7% chance that you will not encounter a teacher until you hit 10 people. 